Today I'll be showing you how to get all 22 hidden weapons, armor sets and rings that you can find early on in Dragon's Dogma 2 right here in this region of the map just to the west of the starting city of Vernworth. I'll be walking you through each area starting from the city and we'll be finding weapons for each vocation in the game. I already covered everything cool in the city in my last video, so let's get started on the wilderness. So starting out from the capital city of Vernworth, which you come to very early on in the game, you're going to cross over this great bridge just here. And from this bridge, you're going to see a large watchtower to the left. So as you're crossing the grand bridge here, you'll be able to see the tower in the distance there with the ballista on top. And we're just going to skip ahead to the base of the tower because I'm pretty confident you can get there alone. Once you arrive, you're just going to head up the spiral staircase within. There's a chest on the first floor and then another one on the balcony. But you can use the Levitate spell to get the Seeker's token on the rock opposite here. If not, you'll have to rely on Harpies. So if you actually hit one of the Harpies with a ranged weapon, it will fall to the ground. And then what you can do is you can guide that Harpy over to this rock Never just here. And you'll find another treasure chest with a weight stone, as well as some gold in the Harpy's nest. Then if we head up another two floors, we can find another chest and then all the way on the top, you'll find a unique chest, which has the ring we actually came here for, the Ring of Awareness. Now this ring increases the amount of time it takes you to be put to sleep when the harpies are using their singing spell on you that keeps putting you to bed. Having this ring makes you more resistant to it. And there are actually harpies at the top of the tower and you can use them to get over to that Seeker's token and a nearby chest. So once you've fully explored this watchtower, here if you actually drop down from the watchtower you'll see a path just across the river now you can get to this path by just going around the river past the campsite that's the watchtower just there there are useful ingredients that's the campsite and if you just walk around the edge there you no get to that path so now we're just going to follow this path ahead all the way down this coastal path just carry on following this path and eventually you'll get to like this little fork in the path here and you can come through the cliffs here where you'll find a coastal little house just keep an eye on your mini map and you eventually get to this big sort of cavernous exit from the caves and this will take you to a coastal hut just over here on the map and there is a chest right next to all of these sun blooms there can be no harm in bringing this along which you can loot for, for thunderous sure. concord which is a spell you can get some more sun blooms over here which lazel is picking up but then the real treasure is inside here you've got one of those collector seeker tokens there but you've got the Shadow Walker's neck wrap in that chest. Now, the Shade Walker's neck wrap has this cool sort of half shoal, half back cape, which is a nice aesthetic. It's definitely not the best cape in the game, but it has a cool look when you apply it to a rogue character. So after we've looted that location, we can head back to the path and just carry on following this path until you reach the campsite just here on the map. Just to the south of this campsite is Harv Village. And in this cave over here, Stormwind Cave, we can find a hidden cape and circlet, which looks really, really cool. So you can see the capital city over there. I'm at the campfire right now, and this is the village right in front of us. So we're just going to head across the water. And this is Harv Village. Now, we're going to go into this encampment, right down this path and into this cave here. And it's here you're going to find some soldiers that you'll need to save during the main quest. They'll be standing right here. The soldiers you need to save are hidden inside this cave. So we're going to go ahead and enter. Turn on our lantern and we're going to head right to the back. I've already killed the enemies in here just to make this video even faster. You can see the mini map on the left there if you get confused. But it's a linear path so you can't really go anywhere else. You're just going to go straight on. Eventually on the map you'll come into this more open sort of area. And once you do you can just hop down here and you're going to climb up to the left here and loop back around on yourself. And if you come over here, you'll see some sauruses, which you can kill. And in this chest, which I've already looted, you'll find the Serpentine Circlet, which is an incredibly powerful item for mages, sorcerers, spearhands, the magic archer and wayfarer. This is the cave entrance. You go down here, you go left, you go straight down, and then it's just up here on the map where I'm standing. And now what we're going to do is we're going to turn around again and we're going to go south back the way we came basically but this time we're going to carry on down the cave through here and you're going to see like this blue light at the back here and a bunch of now there's actually no enemies down here yet 
but there right. will be a trap Speak and they will spring it soon. So just on the left here, you'll find a first chest, which you can go ahead and loot. With the wake stone shard and then just opposite you you'll see another here. chest just down here in the darkness portion. right at the bottom what could be the cause? and you can just open this chest this is going to net you some sorcerer gear the saurus scale cape which is probably one of the coolest looking capes in the game to be honest i'm a massive fan of this one and it can be worn by any class too which is great so now when you're heading back out you will get ambushed by some lizards so make sure you're prepared for that so you can see now they're spawning in from where we got that circlet, it's literally down this path all the way at the bottom just here of the map. So once again, from where we found that circlet, this time we're going to go right. Don't go left. You're going to go right again. And then you'll see this wooden chest you can loot. We're going to go past that and we're going to climb up these little eggs here. And then you're going to go straight on into the darkness here. Now, if you go to the left... And around the corner, you're going to find another chest if you climb up this cliff here, right behind these eggs. This chest is going to hold, which is a very light shield that you can put on your character, and it can also be upgraded too to become even more defensible. Pretty good if you want to carry stuff around too. So from where the circle is, it's actually just down here and at the back of this little section over here. And now if you like, when you're exiting, make sure you go down this pathway and it basically loops back to the beginning if you break through this wall here. And you'll find another fairy stone chest, and then from there, you can just exit the dungeon. So for reference, Vernworth City is over here. We went all the way down here until we reached Harve Village. And now we're done looting this location. The next secret is actually located to the northwest. If you come up the path here to the north from the village, you'll come past the northern half ruins. There is a Seeker's token at this location, but beyond that, nothing else. So if we carry on down the path across the river, we'll eventually get this T-junction before you reach the Broken Bridge. From this T-junction, you actually want to go to the north through the forest here, and eventually you're going to get to this location where I'm standing on the map. Here we can get a very sultry armor piece. Carry on making your way along the cliff until you get to this little path that goes to the north, like I showed you on the map. If you come north on this path and just follow it through the woodlands, you'll see kind of like a little lookout post right ahead of you. Now we actually want to go left down a small little path that goes up a hill here. So we're going to go up this hill. And you'll see a cabin right ahead of you. Inside this cabin... There's a chest, which you can go ahead and loot. And behind you, on the bed, you will find a cutlass. But to actually get the armor beast, you'll need to kill the ogre, which is behind the shack here. The ogre is weak to getting hit between the eyes specifically. That's its weak point. And you can use the oil pots nearby to douse it in pitch, which makes it easy to set fire to. But if it becomes enraged and starts charging around, just wait until it calms down because you can't stun it while it's in this state, or at least it's really hard to. If you have shield storm or any guard breaking attacks, you can reliably knock it down and just go ham on its face. It's also vulnerable to poisoning and being put to sleep. And you can even freeze parts of its body, making it easier to handle. But once it is defeated, it will drop the blessed waste cloth. Now, killing this creature will unlock the forbidden waste cloth. Apparently, it's blessed, but it, 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 if your character's male, it's definitely not. As you can see, it looks really good on mages. So the Cutlass is actually available in the starting city to purchase, but you can get it here for free. It's a brutish sword for brutish work. And it's a decent starting weapon, but it's definitely not that amazing. The Silver Rapier, which I showed you how to get last video, is actually better. So now from this location to get to the next boss, we're just going to head down this path directly to the east until we reach this campsite. Now, once you get to this campsite location, you can see the campsite right here, and there's these big sort of Stonehenge-like obelisks around you will find a giant minotaur boss here that will just be sitting around waiting for you to kill him. So after you've defeated this boss, you can now... So after you defeat this boss and take him down, you can then loot him for a bunch of crafting materials, but most importantly, the Ring of Galliantry. A ring bearing a mysterious power that invigorates the spirit, where it takes more damage from ranged attacks from behind but less from the front. This is a super unique weapon and perfect for a vigilant tank build, especially against certain bosses that employ a lot of ranged attacks. So from the campsite, we're going to go directly north to this T-junction on the road here, and you're going to find a cliff face just here. You see that's the campsite over there, and right behind me is this big cliff. 
Now it's actually possible Look, just to climb up oxen. here. How tranquil. And Tis just hop to up to the top to of this cliff here. And then you can jump onto the mountain range where you will find a ladder which actually takes you all the way to the top of the cliff. And once you reach the top of these ladders you'll find that there's tons of ore nodes. There's four ore nodes over there you can mine. And then over here, ore to mine. So whenever you want ore, you can just come to this location. It does respawn, obviously. So after you're done looting, you'll find this big scaffolding area in the middle here. And once again, you can run up these ladders. Great. And that will get us to the top here, where you will find a secret little hut with a few sleeping goblins outside. Come inside and loot this chest. That's going to give you a harpy snare smoke beacon, which is really important for later. There's also some camping supplies gold silver so once you've explored the top of the cave area here the next area is once again from this campsite just to the north of this road i'm standing in the same place you're going to see like this shallow river here and just to the right if you follow this river you're going to find a collapsed mine this has a bunch of treasure so you can see the campfire over there we're literally going to turn around and follow the road where this river is there's a big archway there i'm just going to follow down the river a few zombies will spawn here, but you can literally just run past them and ignore them. There is a house, and it should be unlocked. You can loot this chest here with the Ring of Acclamation. Now, if this door happens to be locked, I can't remember if it was or wasn't, you can actually get up here by climbing on the roof. To climb on the roof, you need to go back all the way around here and then up this path and along this path until you reach the rift stone. And then you can drop down the cliff where you'll find a chest and jump on that roof there. The Ring of Acclamation moderately boosts your max health. Anyway, after we've looted this abandoned house here, we're going to turn around and follow the river into the abandoned cave. And we're going to put on our lantern so we can actually see something. So just go on and run through the abandoned cave. There'll be a big sort of blockage here which you can break. One of your companions will help you or you can smash through it. Behind this bush you'll find a poison lizard which you can kill. And then in this ah, chest just real. over here which I already Isn't looted. Me? Now this treasure chest holds the kindred cape which has a kind of flame pattern on and it actually gives you plus 2% elemental resistance to fire. So pretty awesome looking cave. I'm sure we'll find a purpose for it. In due now time. this cave actually continues on if you smash down this barrier just over here. Once this barrier is smashed down, we can then climb up this rock face over here and get the two-handed weapon that is currently on my back. So there's a bunch of goblins that are going to be here, which you can kill. You'll find another chest to loot. And then you can go up to the left here and you'll be What's faced with this giant wall. I can't make much out from here. Now to actually get up here, you need to basically climb. point at the wall. One of my abilities could bridge this gap. So to do this, you need to go into the rift and find a pawn with levitate or springboard or launch board. Just keep pointing at the wall and one of them will help you. Get on. I shall Sometimes you have to spam air. point until they get the idea, but there you go. Now he's pulled us up there. And up here, you'll find a reptilian monster to kill. So take out the Saurus and then in this chest just here, you will find a two-handed sword called Life Taker. Now Life Taker is a sturdy greatsword fashion of three blade cores and its knockdown power is insanely high. And it's actually the strongest two-handed weapon you can get this early on in Dragon's Dogma. You drop down from that Great. wall there Follow and me. continue down this cavern, you'll find a bunch of ore and all this ore will respawn. And then we can continue on through the cave and we'll actually come out at the other side. It's a pretty linear cave, so you can't get lost. And eventually we'll come out of the other side here. We look on the map. You can see we've gone from this collapsed mine to this collapsed mine to the north. Now, from this location, we can actually go up to the north. There's another cave called the Derelict Mine. But more importantly, we're going to find a piece of armor near this rift stone just over here. So you can see that's the cave there. And we're just going to follow this wall along to the the side here and right here there's like a broken house in front of you to get inside we're going to jump I've up this cliff and hop on one. the roof let me try it again here we go and now we can drop into this area and we can open this obviously if you're an archer by the way you can just shoot those locked doors that's going to give us the Ali Saint Oxford. Now, compared to the Marcher's Helm, which I'm currently wearing, it has 240 defense, but the magic defense, and the magic defense is only slightly worse. 
It even has a slash resistance of 10 and 12 knockdown resistance as well. What do you guys think? Can we get away with this? Look, <laughs> if you cook rotten scrag breast, it actually gives you strength and defense. Mate, let's go for it. So we left the collapse mine here and we came over here to this campsite where we found that hood. And now if we come up the path here, we can get to the derelict mine. So you can see from the campsite just up the hill here, we can easily get to the derelict mine. And there's going to be a bunch of ore in this location too. I mean, if you can still carry anything. So you just zigzag up this pathway look. and you finally get to the derelict mine. Let's turn on our lantern. So with the entrance just behind us over there, we can actually climb up. My pawns just destroyed this entrance this. into this area. But you can see there's a hole below me. That will take you to the skeletons, but we should be able to jump this gap if you sprint alone. with your sword in your right. patch. Oh. So we fell down, but no worries. We can just run up here and go left and then climb back up again. So let's run and jump. Okay, let's, sign, let's run and jump just so we don't fall down. And then you can finally continue up the stairs here. There's another collapsed hole in front of us. So let's just run and jump over this so we don't fall in. And then there's a chest right at the end here, but we just need to run and jump over this. Wow, my follower. What are you doing? Look, master, a treasure chest. We shall have to find a way to reach it. So now we're going to jump back over this. Lazel's fallen down, but no matter. We want to fall down this hole here. And then we're going to come out at this treasure chest. Which we can loot for some dried fruit. We have found a material. And we can run different and combinations jump of over materials here. Result in different creations. Oh my god. And drop down here. There's another chest just down here that you can also loot. My pawns already did that. They looted both of these chests. And inside they found the Helm Berate daggers, which we came here for, and also a Wakestone shard and gold. And go up these stairs. And that's going to lead us to the other side of this grate here. So we can go ahead and open that. And that's going to give us the Ranger's tights. Now we can break this if we get the right angle. And then if you smash through the wall here, it will lead you back outside. You can see the outside there. Now the ranger's tights are clearly created for female characters. They look a bit strange if you don't wear them with an armor set that has a skirt on it. But for rangers, they're actually really good armor pieces. Next we have the Helmbart daggers. These are kind of weird. They're like slashing scythes with spear tips. Kind of like you're trying to use the top of a halberd as a dagger. Now, given they have a strength of 257 and a magic damage of 70, they are pretty versatile weapons. And they're easily the best daggers you can access early on in the game. So from the city of Vernworth to get to the next location, we're going to come all the way over here. Like I've already showed you how to get here, but you know, we just carry on down the path here and across the river. And we're right here at the Northern Derelict Mine. And now we're going to go to the north over here. And there's a crossing at this river where you can get across the banks to this path. Just keep following the path here and you'll see some goblins on the right. And this is the river crossing just here. After you cross the river here, just head towards this pathway. And then you're going to follow this path all the way down until you reach this elven structure just here on the map. As you can see, the pathway is pretty overgrown, but if you just carry on following it, you'll reach this cavern area. And if you run down, and if you run down this valley, you eventually find some bandits at the end that you can take out. Make sure you take out the mage first. Makes the fight so much easier. Correct. I can do no less in service to the original. Not a bad idea. I thought you like these spells. There is also a troll at the bridge in this area, and it is possible to knock him off and even use him as a bridge. And if you get him to this point where you get him unsteady and he falls over, you can then just power attack him to make him fall off completely. 
once you've taken care of those bandits in this little sort of elven structure which you can see right here there's a chest right in the center and in this chest you're going to be able to get a magic bow now the gimbal guy can be used by magic archers and deals a substantial amount of magical damage it's definitely one of the best magic archer bows you can get this early on but if you want a bow for an archer i'll show you how to get one of those if we actually come from this chest and we turn around we go back down cavernous pass through the bushes and then we're going to go to the right after this rocky cliff sort of folds away here and then we're going to go back on ourselves back to the west over here if you please there's kind of like a tree stump that you can walk across now this is very hidden but just to the left there's a rock face and if you look to the left as you walk past there's actually a secret entrance into it so we go through here we can go into this secret area where we'll find another campsite and a bunch of dead lizards that I've already killed here. There's also a riftstone of the fellowship nearby, near the campsite. And down here, there's going to be a lot of lizards to kill once you arrive. So once you get down here and you've killed all these lizards, you're going to find a chest in this house here. You can go ahead and loot. There's some arrows and also we have a bunch of potions and money. 2,500 gold. And here we have Mirfir. Let's go ahead and pick that up. It is a bow crafted by an elven artisan with impeccable technique. It's a simple design and it eliminates diversions so that the bow wielder may move as one. This bow is extremely powerful with 217 damage, 100 strike near the campsite and if you rest here you can then go north to Dark Horde Cave located just here. You can see the house and campfire there and then if we look north this is the entrance to the hidden cave just up here and to the left you're going to find a bunch of these bolt lizards that drop scales but from the main entrance we just came in at there's a secret entrance actually right ahead of you which you can break down and behind that you're going to find another chest so now as you work your way to the end of the linear dungeon you eventually come across this large cliff which is exactly like the last one we encountered but instead of getting your companion to boost you you actually need to physically throw them up there and tell them to wait using the command. And then you yourself can actually just climb up this nearby rock and jump onto the cliff like this. And now you're both up there, you'll come to a second large wall as you walk a bit further. Now there is a slime here which you can defeat using elemental damage, but after it's dead, you can then point at that wall and tell your companion to boost you up. Might take a few tries again, but once he does, you'll then be able to access this treasure chest that has the unique armor set that we came here for. Now the gauntlet petticoat looks incredibly cool and it only weighs 2.6 kilograms which is fantastic for the physical defense boost that the armor set gives you. Its magic defense is also pretty good too especially considering it has a 10% resistance to both fire and ice damage. It's also got a really good knockdown resistance, but it's kind of annoying that fighters can't use it. I love uneven armor sets when the shielded arm is covered in plate metal with the rest left free. So now we're done at the Dark Horde cave, the next location we're going to go to using the main capital city as a reference point is once again on the far west side of the map, all the way over here at the depleted ore deposit. Now this cave is close to the collapsed mine where I showed you earlier. From the entrance of the collapsed mine, you're going to want to leave it and then come back down the river here until you reach the pathway. And then from there, you can go up this path until you get to the depleted ore deposit. So you can see this is the pathway underneath that big archway there. The river goes straight downwards to the other cave. But if we go on the left here, we can climb upwards to this mine. So let's light our lantern and head on inside. Firstly to the left there's a dead end, doesn't go anywhere, so it only leaves us one route to go forward and explore. Which leads us to the first room which has a treasure chest just here in the camping tent and then you can actually go much deeper in this cave so it can continue on downwards just here and eventually you'll get to this iron grate and this is where things get a little bit scary. After you've broken the lock on that gate, you'll find some leeches in this next room. So do take care because they're pretty annoying. There's another one on the right hand side and you'll also find a bunch of ore veins. But then if you carry onwards, there's another iron grate door, which will allow you to go into the crypts. Now the crypts are pretty dangerous. You can see there's a wall here that you can actually break. 
seeing this obstacle smashed to pieces. There will be a bunch of zombies here, though, so do take care. You can just let your ranged pawns deal with them and sit back and wait. Once they're all dead, we can leave the chest for some patroller knee guards. These are what the knee guards look like. They have an extremely good physical defense, but a slightly lower magical defense. So now we've looted that chest, we can turn around and go right. And we're going to find another chest just down here. And then from that chest, we can go back down here and this cavern goes even deeper. And here we get the favored branches. We also get ambushed by ghosts and skeletons. So once they're all dealt with, that's going to unlock the favored branch. An archer staff is an incredible hybrid weapon because it has both strength and magic damage. And of course, you can upgrade it too. So from Vernworth, the next location we're going to is Trevo Mine Crossroad. At this point, if you just go east over here, you'll reach Trevo Mine. And this whole area is like the entrance to the mine. So you can see this is the mine area that you'll come to and the path will lead to. And there's a really obvious cave there. So this is Trevo Mine and we're going to head on inside because this is actually the location you'll come to if you want to unlock the really warrior now. class and what the sorcerer doing? class. I already Tis made a guide with a full with walkthrough beasts. linked below if you're interested. Eventually you'll come to a fork in the path where you can either go left or you can go up this cliff to the right. So we're going to go up the cliff here and we're going to continue onwards and upwards and then follow the path until you get to this larger room. Now, right here in this box, you will find a two-handed sword. It's not uh, as good as the two-handed sword I showed you earlier, all. but you can use it to unlock the warrior vocation. Then if you go right from the chest and go through this wooden prison door, eventually you'll come to this large open room here with a light coming in, and there's a bridge with a cliff underneath it. There's also a chest at the top here on the right while you're here that you can grab. You need to come over here and actually physically throw your pawn up there so they can pick it up. After you've got that chest, you'll find some guards here that will be fighting some goblins and you'll need to save them as part of a really early quest, a main quest at this location. And then the chest right at the back here is going to contain, these are going to be the best thief daggers you can get early on, the Signs of Valor. Now, if you head all the way to the bottom of this dungeon, exploring the only other avenue there is, you'll eventually reach the bottom of the large pit under the bridge that you saw earlier. And here you can find the, the Grievous Horns is a Archer Staff of Bronze. And it's not as good as the Archer Staff I showed you earlier, it's just used to unlock the Sorcerer class. So now we've covered this entire region of the map, but there's actually much more to still discover in the starting area. So if you're a completionist like me, make sure you check out this other video on where you can find all the weapons in these other areas. Or you can check out our wiki link below.